Okay. Here we go. If you are new to the channel of 2022, when the channel was popping off in terms of views and subscribers, you didn't know this. But I started Mario Kart Tour content back in 2020. So it was when COVID-19 was at its worst. I would upload things like track reviews, video ends videos, even videos with Among Us. However, those videos didn't get a lot of views and it made sense because I had like around 30, 40 subscribers at the time. But then things changed when I uploaded a video about 10 things that makes no sense in Mario Kart Tour back in March of 2021, which ended up being my first ever scripted video. I have gained popularity with that video that I decided to make more scripted videos, but some of them were scrapped because of time management. It wasn't until January 2022 when I uploaded the 10 mistakes video, which helped me hit 200 subscribers. I then decided to move on to scripted videos in the process, such as the two parts of the hates video, part two of the makes no sense video, the pointless video, the skill items explained series, the changes video, the enjoys video, and the missed opportunities video. But now, I have gotten into the part to where I have ran out of ideas and my taste of Mario Kart Tour has slowly degraded. Because of this, this will be the penultimate Mario Kart Tour video on this channel. After this video, I'm going to do something I haven't done in a while, and that is a character progression. After the character progression video is out, I am ending Mario Kart Tour content and officially retire from the game, this time for good. But don't worry, just because I am no longer uploading Mario Kart Tour videos, it does not mean I'm quitting YouTube altogether. Because I am now a variety streamer slash content creator, so there will be more content on this channel than just Mario Kart. Heck, I even have a Xenoblade Chronicles 2 challenge that I have in mind, to which I plan on making sometime this year. So thank you for listening to my announcement, but enough stalling now, let's get right into the video. Now that Mario Kart Tour has ended new content into the game, I thought it would be nice to go through the different characters and track possibilities that I feel like should have been added to Mario Kart Tour. Because, let's face it, there are a lot of tracks and characters that could have been in the game. If this sounds familiar to you, back in January 2023, I uploaded a video where I discussed missed opportunities in Mario Kart Tour. However, I have decided to update my reasonings because since Mario Kart Tour isn't adding new content, there are lots of possibilities that Nintendo could have used in Mario Kart Tour, but are now known as definite missed opportunities. I have revisited the original missed opportunities video and will include tracks and characters that had definite missed opportunities and battle tracks will also be included. That basically covers all the intro stuff for this video, so make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell so you are notified of all my future videos, as well as picking up some of my merch and joining the channel for early access to videos, but all those are completely optional. But without further ado, here are the definite missed opportunities in Mario Kart Tour. The first category that I will be discussing is the drivers. Now, I want to point out that unlike the original Missed Opportunities video, I am not just discussing original drivers, but I am listing off character alts as well. 
despite the original video not hitting the 500 like goal, so that way I will discuss missed opportunities in the character alts. So I'm doing it anyway. In the original missed opportunities video, the original drivers that I discussed that had missed opportunities include Petey Piranha, Honey Queen, Wiggler, Professor Egad, Ninji, Cranky Kong, and Toadsworth. Apart from Petey Piranha and Wiggler, as they debuted in the Piranha Plant and Pipe Tours, the rest of these drivers had opportunities to be in Mario Kart Tour but never debuted. Professor Egad for the first and fourth Halloween Tour, Ninji for the two Ninja Tours, Cranky Kong for Jungle, Honey Queen for the first Autumn Tour, and Toadsworth for Toad vs. Toadette. But there are other drivers that never debuted. I was told that Luma could have been a driver due to Wii Rainbow Road and Paratrooper for Sky due to Sky Garden. But you know one driver that should have been a driver but didn't? Spike. Here is my reasoning. In the Mario 2023 tour, we were introduced the Spike Me outfit. But when the trailer arrived for the Mario 2023 tour, Spike was never to be found. I was like, uh, this makes no sense, Nintendo. I mean, we have gotten the P.D. Piranha Me outfit and Wiggler Me outfit debuting the same tours with P.D. and Wiggler. Another thing I forgot to mention is that if these drivers were in Mario Kart Tour, what skill item would they have? Well, Spike will definitely have the bomb cannon because, yeah, for Honey Queen, I would have given her the fire flower because bees pollinate from flowers, but in the daytime and in summer when bees are most active. I would have given Luma the dash ring because... They can transform themselves into launch stars in Super Mario Galaxy. Ninji with double bombs because of the act with ninjas and their use of smoke bombs as stealth weapons. Cranky Kong with banana barrel because he probably ate a lot of bananas when he was in his youth. I had this thought of Giant Banana because he is the ruler of the Kongs in the Super Mario Bros movie. But that movie came out in theaters in April 2023, and I am discussing things prior to Mario Kart Tour's release in 2019, so not a good idea. Paratroopa with triple green shells, because if you have seen my super class skill items explained, triple red shells aren't in Tour, and Lakitu, despite having a red shell, has triple green shells, and Paratroopa also has a red shell. For Toadsworth, I would have given him the Mushroom Cannon, all for being the elder of the Toads in the Mushroom Kingdom. And for Professor Egad, I would have given him the Double Bombs, because I find the bombs to be some sort of machine, and he is the inventor of a lot of machines, such as the Poltergust Machines, and even Flood in Super Mario Sunshine. And I say that the bombs are a machine because they are freaking wind-up toys. But there is more than the above listed characters that I felt like had a definite missed opportunity. And I just thought of this a month after this script was written. Boom Boom and Pom Pom. They have been long requested as playable drivers since after the original Mario Kart 8 game on the Wii U after the Koopalink's appearance. They both should have been playable drivers in Mario Kart Tour with their addition with one of the two Bowser Tours, especially the 2023 Bowser Tour because Boom Boom and Pom Pom are two of Bowser's henchman and henchwoman that fight Mario and friends in Bowser's castle. The skill item I would give Boom Boom triple green shells because the triple green shells revolve around the user and Boom Boom spins around rapidly trying to attack Mario and friends. I know Lucky 7 revolves as well, but I chose triple green shells because Boom Boom is a Koopa and the green shells and red shells are basically Koopa shells 
as confirmation from the amount of times Mario stomps on Koopas. And Pom Pom can have Boomerang because of the same reasoning as Ninja Shy Guy due to the Shuriken explanation in my first part of the High End Skill Items Explained video. How ninjas throw shurikens like a boomerang to harm their enemies, which is fitting for Pom Pom because she is literally holding a shuriken. That's all the original drivers I want to list off in this portion of the characters list. But now I want to discuss the character alts. Now since character alts are unpredictable with certain characters like Rosalina Halloween, Pauline Cowgirl, and Daisy Sailor, I am only covering alts that were introduced to the Mario franchise before Mario Kart Tour's launch. And I will be listing them by character as well as naming off the tour that would have been perfect for their characteristic. In addition, I am only going one alt per driver that I felt like these alts had a missed opportunity. And just like with the previous list, I am also going to be listing off their possible skill item if these alts were in tour. I am not including Mario in this list because we have a ton of Mario alts in Mario Kart Tour and most of these alts were derived from Super Mario Odyssey. Mario alts that were in tour that were in Odyssey include King, Musician, Black Fedora, Golf, Tuxedo, Doctor, Swimwear, Aviator, Builder, Chef, Samurai, Happy, Classic, Akama, Sunshine, Satellaview, Baseball, Racer, Santa, Metal, and Gold. So, Mario doesn't need any more alts in Tor. So with that being said, the first character who I felt like had a alt missing in Tor is Peach. Just like with Mario, she also has costumes from Odyssey that made their way to Tor. These outfits include Wedding, Winter, Explore, Vacation, and Yukata, even though the Tor version has hearts instead of fire flowers. But there is more than Odyssey that Peach had outfits prior to Mario Kart Tour. She is also playable in Super Mario 3D World, to which there was only one alt that Peach had from 3D World that made its way to Tour, and that is Cat Peach. So, of all the outfits, minus the cat outfit that Peach had in Super Mario 3D World, I felt like it would be fitting if Tanuki Peach with the Tanuki Leaf would have been a good fit for Tour especially in the second Peach vs. Bowser tour, to which in that tour, we got a lame-ass Super Driver instead of a Peach or Bowser alt. Plus, Mario, Rosalina, and Luigi are the only drivers in Mario Kart tour to have their Tanuki slash Kitsune forms also with the Tanuki Leaf. So I felt like Tanuki Peach is one of the Tanuki drivers that got left out of the dust. The next character is Wario, and this one is kinda self-explanatory. If you were one of those Nintendo geeks, you would know that Wario has his own game series called WarioWare. You basically know where I'm going with this one. In that game, he has an outfit not like his original yellow shirt with purple overalls. Nope, this dude drips out in a badass motorcycle outfit. This outfit would have been a perfect addition to Mario Kart Tour. Mostly the Wario vs Waluigi Tour. And it could have had the double bombs because of its motorcycle. And you know motorcycles, they produce a lot of smoke. like. Have you seen Daredevil motorcyclists? They squeal their tires to the ground. The next character who I felt like whose alt had a missed opportunity is Toadette. The reason why I chose Toadette is because she has an alt that can be found in Super Mario Maker 2. We got Cat Mario, Cat Luigi, Cat Peach, Cat Toad, Meowser, and Meowzelina. However, K 
Cat Toadette, the only lone cat character, is not playable in Tor. I didn't include Meowser Jr. because he, although he is playable in Bowser's Fury, Bowser's Fury was launched after Mario Kart Tour. So that is why I'm not including Mal Meowser Jr. in this part. With the Super Bell item, I feel like Cat Toadette should have been in the Toad vs. Toadette Tour, or maybe even Vacation, as on most occasions, people bring their pets on vacation. You probably know where I'm going to go with this one, and it is yet again another Super Mario Odyssey costume. However, this next character only had one outfit, and that is Bowser. Most importantly, Wedding Bowser. Let's face it, we had Wedding Mario and Wedding Peach, but no Wedding Bowser. A definite lost opportunity for one of the two Bowser tours and could have had coin box as a skill item because he stole millions of dollars in stuff that he stole in Super Mario Odyssey, such as the Lock Lady dress from Lake, the Frost Frosted Cake from Snow, the Binding Band from Sand, the Soraway Bouquet from Wooded, Electricity from Metro to stabilize his church which is built in the Moon Kingdom, Cappy's sister Tiara from Cat Kingdom, some of the water from Seaside, which is probably the lamest drink he could have chosen. I mean, like he could have stolen Mountain Dew. Now that is a party. And Stupendous Stew from Luncheon. This next one is a batch of characters, and I did say I was only including one each, but I feel like I need to include them all together. If you saw the Nintendo Direct back in September of 2020, we had an announcement regarding the 35th anniversary of Super Mario with a couple of new launches, such as Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, Super Mario 35, RIP that game, Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, something I will never play, Super Mario 3D All-Stars, and of course, a new tour celebrating the first ever Mario Kart game on the SNES, which is titled the Super Mario Kart Tour. With that tour, we were given two drivers in their Super Mario Kart renders, Mario and DK Jr. However, these two drivers were the only playable Super Mario Kart forms, and a lot of us wanted to see more of these drivers. In Super Mario Kart, there are eight drivers altogether, Mario, DK Jr., Luigi, Peach, Bowser, Toad, Koopa, and Yoshi. If these remaining six drivers would have been in tour and their skill items, I would have loved to see SNES Luigi in one of the three Mario vs. Luigi tours with the Fire Flower, SNES Peach in for Princess with the Heart, SNES Bowser for one of the two Bowser tours, or Bowser vs. DK with a Fire Flower, and I know what you're saying, why not the Bowser shell? Well, let's just say Bowser breathes fire in the first Super Mario game, and SNES Bowser kind of resembles the very first time we see Bowser in the Super Mario Bros. game. SNES Toad with Triple Mushrooms in for Toad vs. Toadette, and SNES Yoshi in the third Yoshi tour with Yoshi's Egg. I couldn't think of a good tour for SNES Koopa, but I was thinking Sunshine all because of SNES Koopa Beach 2 having its RT variant debuting that tour, and that was the best thing I could have chosen. Oh, and by the way, he would have had the triple green shells, and there really isn't that much explaining why they need these items, as they're pretty much self-explanatory. There is one more driver who I felt like whose alt has a definite missed opportunity, and that character is Pauline. The only alts that we have for Pauline include Party Time, Cowgirl, and Rose. And that is honestly a bit of a short inventory for Pauline, but I can't say that because we only have 
one alt of a Donkey Kong and one alt of a Larry. Larry! But this one alt is pretty obvious why it's a definite missed opportunity for Pauline. And it just made me wondering, why wasn't she a playable alt in the first place? Mayor Pauline from Super Mario Odyssey. Man, a lot of Mario Odyssey alts in this list. The reason why? Pauline is mayor of New Donk City. And New Donk City is heavily inspired by New York City. Hmm, that rings a bell pretty well. That's right, New York Minute. So the fact that we got New York Minute, but no Mayor Pauline, really threw me off. So she could have been in the tours where each of the four variants of New York Minute were released. Minus New York Minute 2 as we got Pauline Party Time with 3DS Rainbow Road in the Holiday 2019 tour. She also could have had Bomb Cannon due to fireworks of the New Donk City Festival. And you know fireworks, they know how to bring out the boom. I have finally made it to the next category being the tracks. Now, there are a lot of tracks that I mentioned from the original Missed Opportunities video that actually made their way to tour. So because of this, they are excluded from the list, such as GCN Daisy Cruiser, SNES Bowser Castle, or as what Sean Ray's called it, this damn track. For Super Mario Kart, people were speculating for now, like for the longest time, until this damn track shows up out of nowhere. N64 Mario Raceway Luigi Raceway, GBA Luigi Circuit, GBA Peach Circuit, Wii Daisy Circuit, DS Peach Gardens, Wii Mushroom Gorge, GBA Snowland, GBA Riverside Park, GBA Lakeside Park, and GCN DK Mountain. Now I have to point out that unlike the characters character alts list, due to a handful of tours from New York to 4th Anniversary, I will not mention what tour these tracks I'm about to mention should have debuted in. Because there were plenty of opportunities to include these tracks. The first set of tracks I want to discuss is quite obvious. That being 3DS Rock Rock Mountain and GBA Bowser's Castle 4. Now while the tracks themselves are in tour, they are missing key features that stand out the game. Reverse Trick Variants. Rock Rock Mountain and Bowser's Castle 4 are not just the only tracks to lack an RT variant, but Bowser's Castle 4 lacking a T variant. I was like, why don't they have the reverse trick variants and Bowser's Castle 4 missing a T variant? And quick thing to note, Rock Rock Mountain was one of the first tracks to be in Mario Kart Tour. However, thanks to a Mario Kart Tourist, by the name of Ryder Kart DX, he pointed out that Rock Rock Mountain RT was never planned to be in tour, while GBA Bowser's Castle 4, T and RT were planned but got scrapped. The next track I felt like had a definite missed opportunity is a bundle of tracks combined, and they are the city tracks, with the exception of New York, Tokyo, and Paris. These three tracks I just mentioned have a combined route, with New York Minute 4 being a combination of New York Minute 1 and 3 for lap 1, and a little bit of New York Minute 2 for lap 2. Tokyo Blur 4, a combination of Tokyo Blur 1, a reverse Tokyo Blur 2, and Tokyo Blur 3 after a U-turn after the Camarenaron in Senso-G, all in the Nintendo's brains to make it a two-section track. The reason? I have no idea. I mean, it's shorter than Wii Rainbow Road. I'll tell you that for sure. And Paris Promenade 3, a combination of Paris 1 and 2. But unlike New York Minute 4 and Tokyo Blur 4, Paris Promenade 3 is in two laps and in sections. The rest of the city tracks, plus Piranha Plant Cove, don't have a combined route. Maybe it is because there were issues with routing the tracks that these city tracks didn't get a combined route? I don't know. 
but it's still a definite missed opportunity regardless. The next track is another bundle of tracks that had a definite missed opportunity, and it's honestly really funny how it was handled a little bit. They are the RMX tracks that only have one version of that RMX track. Mario Circuit, Bowser's Castle, Ghost Valley, and Donut Plains. Rainbow Road, Vanilla Lake, and Chaco Island have two RMX versions, so to me, the four tracks that had only one RMX version are a definite missed opportunity to add another version of these RMX tracks. The next track having a definite missed opportunity has been proven to be the biggest fan base of all time, and I have gotten some comments about it, and that being We Toads Factory. Now, I did say I was not going to mention the tour name of said track, but Toad's Factory is self-explanatory, so I don't need to go too much into detail. For Toad vs. Toadette, just like with Wii Mushroom Gorge, heck, even N64 Toad's Turnpike is a possible contender for Toad vs. Toadette. You might say that Toad Harbor from Mario Kart 8 could have been in that tour, but due to no anti-gravity in tour, Toad Harbor was not on this list. Even though that the anti-gravity portion is optional, and it is way slower. This is the last track that had a definite missed opportunity, and it is a video from my 10 Things That Makes No Sense video, and it is a track from the original Mario Kart 8 DLC that could have been a tour that fits the name perfectly and has zero traces of anti-gravity. So not only is this a definite missed opportunity, but it aged poorly. Let me play you the clip. We are back at the Cat Tour. Introduced Donut Plains 2. I said this in my review video that they should have added Mark Kart 8's Super Bell Subway. And before you say anything in the comments that they'll not bring Mario Kart 8 tracks to Mario Kart Tour because of the anti-gravity, think about this. Super Bell Subway does not have any anti-gravity. So, because there's no anti-gravity, Nintendo could have put Super Bell Subway in the cat tour. It would have made sense. Much more sense than Donut Plains 2. So please, don't go be ranting down in the comments saying that Mario Kart 8 tracks will never be in Mario Kart Tour. One day it will happen. Just gotta be patient. And now for the final category of this video, the battle tracks. For the battle tracks, this category is honestly the quickest one of all. Because I can only think of one battle track that should have been in Mario Kart Tour. And it is obvious why I put it on this list. SNES Battle Course 1. Ever since Battle Mode made their way to tour, Nintendo made a big brain move to use Mario Kart Deluxe's rendition of SNES Battle Course 1's music for all Battle Courses, even the City Battle Courses, New York Minute, and Paris Promenade, which is lazy in my opinion. Now Grand Chew SNES Battle Course 1 and GBA Battle Course 1 are the same, but SNES Battle Course 1 have cut corners, whereas GBA Battle Course 1 is a full square. So there we have it. Those are the definite missed opportunities in Mario Kart Tour. The day after this video gets uploaded, I'll be doing one final character progression before I end Mario Kart Tour content and retire the game for good. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see you all tomorrow for the finale of Mario Kart Tour content on this channel.